Good evening and welcome to the May 27th, 2014 meeting of the Gaston County Board of Commissioners. My name is Tracy Felbeck and I serve as Chairman of the Board as well as Commissioner for the Dallas Township. I'd like to welcome our viewers and thank Time Warner Cable and AT&T for making this possible for our citizens. For a television audience, I'd like to present to you your Gaston County Commissioners beginning on my right. Alan Fraley, Cherryville Township. Good evening, Mickey Price, South Point Township. Good evening, Jason Williams, Gastonia Township. I'm Joe Carpenter, Crowders Mountain Township. Good evening, Tom Kigger, Gastonia Township. Thank you, gentlemen. At this time, I call the meeting to order. Uh, I am delighted to have Boy Scout Troop 28 here with us. They will deliver the invoca invocation and lead us in the pledge. Gentlemen. Skies reverend, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not the temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. <coughs> If you gentlemen want to come up here, we can get a picture if you'd like. You can just come, come all the way back here. There you go. Little guys in the front. I've been in the front my whole life. Thank you, Boy Scout Troop 28. Our next item is agenda revisions and approval. I'll entertain a motion to approve the agenda as is. So moved. Motion made by Commissioner Keeger, seconded by Commissioner Price. Any discussion? All in favor? Motion carries. This time I'll entertain a motion for the approval of minutes, regular meeting of April 22nd, 2014. In the closed session of, session of April 22nd, 2014, pursuant to North Carolina General Statute 143-A11A6. So moved. Second. Motion made by Commissioner Price, seconded by Commissioner Keeger. Any discussion? All in favor? Motion carries unanimously. And our next item is citizen recognition. <coughs> and we have four individuals signed up. If you would, when you're asked to come to the podium, please state your name and address, and you will have five minutes to speak. First up is Donnie Loftus. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, Donnie Loftus, 1849 Gaston Day School Road, Gastonia. I want to speak tonight on an item on the agenda 
for lease discussion and direction. Uh, I am very proud of our local community health care system. We have a great leader in Doug Luckett. We have great staff who are doing some outstanding care of our community. A couple things I'd like to mention to you that out of the 300 hospitals in North Carolina, Caramont Health is one of only 17 independent hospitals in our state. That's a fact that I'm proud of, to be an independent and a viable business partner in our community. Caramont Health has 3,980 employees. 1,082 of those are nurses who do an outstanding job of taking care of patients every day. 485 physicians, 297 volunteers, and we did over 300 heart surgeries last year. Caremont Health has provided last year $14 million in charity care for our community. It shared $3,700,000 to community groups to improve health in our community. We spent $1.9 million in professional education. I want a smart doctor working on me. So this is not a fly-by-night organization. This is a great community organization uh, led by a good leader. And, and these employees are in every one of your township. I'd like for you to also know we were the first Purple Heart hospital in the nation to be recognized by the Order of the Purple Heart. First one. We're in the top 100 for best hospitals in America for the last five years. We're in the top 50 for our heart program. That's here in Gaston County. And last year and this year, we're already in the running for the 20 best looking hospitals in America. That's something we can be proud of. I fully support moving forward with this lease negotiations and working together board to board to impact our community. But this just didn't happen overnight. There's something that's very special about this organization going all the way back to 1946 when this community raised over a million dollars to take care of returning heroes from our nation's wars. In 1973-74, when, when the bed tower you see now, the white elephant, they call it on the hill, just think how long ago, that's 40 years ago, that facility opened. It was the first facility in the United States that had all individual rooms for their patients. So we're talking about leadership in the community, a part of the community from way back. In the middle 2000, when we opened the uh, neonatal birthing center, it was the largest in the United States at the time. It's still state of the art. And recently, we were first in the region to offer the automated breast ultrasound and cryoblation for our citizens and for our patients in our community. I just wanted to tell you that you have a great community healthcare organization in this community. It is staffed by citizens from your townships. It reaches out beyond our borders. We have a great reputation and I look forward to reaching a good agreement with the county. I look forward to working with the commissioners and making that happen. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Next up, Mr. Robert Kellogg. Uh, thank you. My name is Robert Kellogg, and I reside at 1652 Lowell Bethesda Road in Gastonia. Um, I want to thank the uh, commission tonight for the work that they've been doing with the local school board. I know that education is a issue that's on the minds of a lot of our citizens, both here in Gaston County and in North Carolina. And it's, uh, it's really good to see that our local bodies and, and representatives can work together to try to come up with some common solutions. Um, I want to read a list of uh, states in descending order as far as teacher pay um, salaries go. Uh, New York is at the top, and then we've got Massachusetts, the District of Columbia, Connecticut, California, New Jersey, Alaska, Maryland, Pennsylvania, Rhode Island, Michigan, Delaware, Illinois, Oregon, Ohio, Wyoming, Minnesota, Nevada, New Hampshire, Wisconsin, Hawaii, Washington, Georgia, Vermont, Iowa, <coughs> Indiana, Louisiana, Kentucky, Montana, Arizona, Virginia, Colorado, Idaho, Utah, Nebraska, Tennessee, Maine, Texas. I think I need bifocals. 
what is that? Alabama, South Carolina, Missouri, Kansas, North Dakota, Florida, Arkansas, New Mexico, and West Virginia. Finally, North Carolina, and the last three, Oklahoma, Mississippi, and South Dakota. Something is shameful when our state is in competition with Mississippi over education. I know that there's been a lot of uh, hype and a lot of media attention and a lot of things said back and forth and, and all kinds of people have different approaches and opinions on education, but I truly believe that if Gaskin County is going to excel, if it is ever going to become an economic powerhouse, if we want to see our health statistics go up in the right direction and down in, in the right direction, if we want to see our neighborhoods secure and we want to see crime stay at a stable level and not go up, education is the key to all of those things. I believe that our public education system is in crisis, not only here in Gaskin County, but in North Carolina. Here are some of the uh, other statistics on uh, the, the uh, state of our school system. State statistical information places Gaskin County 112 in per pupil spending compared to 115 districts. Gaskin County, um, our $911 per child spending is below the state average when compared to other districts. Gaskin County is last in local funding per student among the 10 largest districts in the state, and Gaskin County is number nine out of the 10. Gaskin County ranks 72nd out of 100 counties in county money allocated per child. North Carolina is ranked 45th nationally in per pupil spending. 50% of our Gaskin County school buildings, and it might even be higher now, are at least 30 years old, and most of those need some sort of repairs, and some of them even need to be replaced. And I apologize if any of those statistics might be wrong. They, you know, the statistics are fluid and they change every day, so those are the, the latest ones I have. Why are our county school teachers also in crisis? It's because budget cuts continually lead to less teacher assistance and the threat of teacher layoffs. Budget cuts force local schools to increase class size while reducing teacher assistance. No teacher raises for several years running, and North Carolina ranks 46 in the nation for teacher pay. No incentive to include education with the elimination of master pay program. Low morale as teachers do more with less money, often buying their own supplies and gathering their own resources to teach in the classroom. No more tenure status, and experienced teachers leaving the school system, creating an experience vacuum. Um, I came across something today that stated that the state of Texas is now recruiting North Carolina teachers and holding job fairs in our state to get those teachers that are dissatisfied here in North Carolina to jump ship and go to Texas. We have a crisis here, and I know you all know that. I know you're all working on that. But as we start to talk about county budgets and state budgets, I hope that education remains something that is in the forefront of our minds and that we begin to have a serious discussion about where we go from here. Because if we don't invest in education now, we're going to pay for it later one way or another. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kellogg. Next is Wilma Ratchford Craig. And then Ms. Riley, you'll be next. I'm Wilma Ratchford Craig. I live at 315 Union New Hope Road, Gastonia, North Carolina. Memorial Day has just come and gone. It's a good time to remember we, those who gave their lives that we might live. It's altogether fitting and proper that we should do this. Many of you will know where that last line came from. The, it's good that we honor them as well as honoring the veterans who survive yet today. And you gave the, the uh, veterans funding here in our county to make things better for them a few years ago. Thank you. Some of those veterans need help now in get, securing jobs, using uh, computers, having uh, the libraries available. Information is free, available from our libraries. The staffs are, the staff is, I guess I should say, at each library is one that will be a valuable help to, to people in getting what they need. I've been here before to, to inform you about libraries and to request that you restore our libraries to our former hours 
and and if anything else, add more. I hope that this time our efforts will bear fruit and that we will restore the libraries to full time in each community in which they're located throughout the county. For this will help us educationally, economically, socially, and it'll help the spirit of our, our county if we know that our commissioners are here behind us helping us to improve things by making our what we already have paid for available to us to use. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Craig. <coughs> Next is Ms. Sheila Riley. Mr. Chairman, commissioners, I'm Sheila Riley. I live at 424 Pamela Street, Gastonia. I am on the board, uh, chair of the Board of Trustees of Caramount Health and Caramount Regional Medical Center. And on behalf of our board, I just wanted to take a minute to thank the commissioners for considering our lease this evening. Our board is united in this front to get a long-term lease in place so we can secure the future of our community hospital for generations to come. We believe it is a fair offer that shows how serious we are about taking this important step. The leadership that some of you like Commissioners Jason Williams and Commissioner Tracy Philback have been displayed have displayed in getting us to this point should really be commended. Myself along with the hospital staff are here with you tonight during your discussion to make ourselves available to answer any questions that you may have concerning Caramount's offer. Again, thank you for your leadership and your consideration of our offer. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Riley. Our next agenda item is consent agenda. I'll entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved, second. Motion made by Commissioner Price, seconded by Commissioner Keeger. Any discussion? All in favor? Motion carries unanimously. Our next item is non-consent agenda. We'll begin with item A. This is travel and tourism to approve agreements for purchase and sale of real property um, at a Hal Dairy site, uh, which are attached. At this time, I'll let Mr. Moore give us a little bit of background on this um, transaction. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. You and uh, uh, authorized the Tur Tourism Board to engage uh, a realtor to assist in, in securing um, an option for a, a site in South Gastonia for proposed uh, uh, ball field complex. And uh, those uh, uh, agreements have been drafted and um, have, have been reviewed and are presented tonight. I think that there are representatives from Travel and Tourism uh, present tonight that could answer any detailed questions they, that you might have about the project and also um, Mr. Clay, who, who uh, has uh, prepared the, uh, the draft uh, agreements, is here also to, to answer any questions you have. This is a project that, that's been uh, on the, the board with Travel and Tourism for quite some time, and um, so um, they have, have finally gotten to the point where they're ready to, to make a proposal, and we'll see what, uh, what can go forward from there. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Any questions, concerns from the board? Commissioner Price. Yeah, thank you. Uh, back when we first, back when we first started talking about uh, the uh, complex, we had uh, have also applied for a uh, state grant for improvements at the uh, bigger staff park in Dallas. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I was wondering if there had been any discussion about should both projects be approved and move forward is it are they going to be in competition with one another or are they going to be complementary of one another or does did that does anybody know if that conversation has taken place I don't Commissioner Carpenter I, I don't know uh, I, I sort of consider these two separate issues you know our county parks is uh, for recreation within the county primarily. 
we do have others. <coughs> this sports complex will be one that will be added for uh, primarily economic development. It will bring people in from all over the country for these tournaments. We had a presentation today at the EDC. It was presented to them, and they adopted a resolution in support of the concept. It wasn't to them to approve this particular way, but uh, they did unanimously uh, agree with the concept of moving forward. I just didn't want us to go to get down the road and find out we've got two. It looks like they'd be complimentary if they're built they will, to uh, be that way. But uh, I know we've had presentations before where uh, we didn't have enough ball fields, even if both of them were built today. We'd still be looking for, I believe, some fields to play on, according to our sports entertainment people. But I just uh, just want to make that thought out there. Just I don't think they're going to be in competition, but I just want to know if anybody knew. <coughs> Thank you. Let me follow up. Uh, <coughs> presently, uh, they have tournaments coming in to the county, and they don't have enough of fields to accommodate <laughs> all of them in any one place, and they're using fields all over. But the big thing is, uh, presently, they're already bringing in enough people at these tournaments that they're having to go out of the county to get enough rooms to house all of the people coming in. But they're they're filling up their hotels but they're also uh, filling up our restaurants to some extent and uh, and I understand a lot of them are purchasing goods at some of our retail vendors. Okay, thank you. Any other questions from the board? Commissioner Freely. I have one uh, that's probably Chuck addressed to him. Uh, during the due diligence period when they're doing the feasibility study just to, on this contract just want to make sure that I'm on the same page if uh, there's some reason that we're unable to close or the feasibility study doesn't play out, we will receive the earnest money back as long as we do it within the 90-day period. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Commissioner Fraley. Any other questions? Okay. I'll attempt to answer your question, Commissioner Price. I, I think we did um, ask that question about the Dallas Park, what they're trying to do there. From my understanding, they'll be complimentary. They won't compete. Um, that's that's my understanding. Also, uh, with Commissioner Fraley, uh, I'm supportive of this with the understanding that if the feasibility study comes back or there's any issues, that the county's not on the hook if we decide we don't want to go further. So without that said, and without, with that said, all in favor? Motion carries unanimously. Did somebody make it? We have a motion. I thought I took a motion. No, I didn't. Okay, my fault. I'll make the motion. I'll entertain a motion, Commissioner Carpenter. Second. Seconded by Commissioner Price. Any discussion? All in favor? Now the motion carries unanimously. At least you guys are paying attention. Okay, next up, Commissioner Price, DHHS Health Division, to appropriate funds from the public health fund balance as a subsidy to Gaston Family Health Service for Child Health Services. Commissioner Price. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Chairman. This uh, came about from our consolidation of the Health Department and the DSS. Um, uh, the Health Department is giving up its uh, child health services, and they will be uh, taken on uh, by Gaston Family Health Services, and this uh, $100,000 is to get us through until the billing cycle catches up with the services rendered that uh, the, the, the patients will be seen, but there's no money there now to pay the staff until the, the reimbursements come in. So this is just a, uh, a loan of 100000 until Gaston family starts bringing in some revenue by these uh, child health services. Thank you, Commissioner Price. Any other questions from it, the board? That, is, that seems to be a cash flow type of situation. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hold on. Hold on. Any other questions from the board? Okay, Earl, do you have a question or a comment? Uh, Commissioner, I'm not, I'm not sure that's a loan. I think it's a risk. Uh, 
extension of, to assist with cash flow. I believe uh, Mr. Dobbins is agreeing with me on that. So it, in fact, w it's, a, it's a transfer of funds. From my understanding, I, I've talked to Mr. Dobbins as well. I did have a couple questions. Um, I, I think this is a very positive thing. Again, we consolidated um, DSS and the health department. One of the things that uh, we asked um, the director to do is look for ways to save monies. So basically what we're doing, we're giving 100000 to Gaston Family Health Service to take over this department. But long term, we should save $100,000 every single year that we don't have to manage it. And, and I just say kudos to the health board director and, and, and very good job. So <coughs> I'm assuming Commissioner Price you will make the motion. I will. A second. Second. Motion made by Commissioner Price, seconded by Commissioner Carpenter. Any further discussion? All in favor? Motion carries unanimously. Last item is item C, GEMS, to approve an additional appropriation of 206000 for rescue squads as listed on the budget change request. I'll just say a couple comments. Uh, I'll go ahead and make the motion. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Commissioner Carpenter. And I'll just make a couple comments. Basically, when we approved the budget last year, because it was a flat budget and there was no way to project um, uh, at least totally how much funds would need to go to the rescue squads, we're now at a point to where either we pay this 206000 to continue the service or cut them off. It would cost us more using gyms, I think, than using the rescue squad. So that's basically a black and white issue. Any other comments? All in favor? Motion carries unanimously. Okay, there were no items for the middle. Okay, we are down to appointments. We will go to Commissioner Fraley. I have none tonight, Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Price. Thank you. I have three. Uh, I'll do them all at once. Uh, reappoint Shirley Wiggins to the Council on Aging. Reappoint Shirley Wiggins to the Region Health Aging Advisory Committee. And appoint Mr. Earl Withers III to the Emergency Medical Services Committee. Second. Motion seconded by Commissioner Keeger. Any discussion? All in favor? Motion carries unanimously. Commissioner Williams. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I've got two. Uh, Parks and Rec Advisory Board, Peter Rue, and also to the Parks and Rec Advisory Board, Kevin Burke. I will second those. Any discussion? All in favor? Motion carries unanimously. Commissioner, Commissioner Carpenter. Okay, I have two. One is to the Economic Development Commission, and that would be Joe Will, and the Parks and Recreation Advisory Board to reappoint D.D. Gillis. Second. Seconded by Commissioner Keeger. Any discussion? All in favor? Motion carries unanimously. Commissioner Keeger. None this evening. Does anyone know if Commissioner Brown has any appointments? While he's checking, I would like to make one appointment to the Sarah Local Planning Committee, uh, Captain Gary Williams. Second. Seconded by Commissioner Keegers. Any discussion? All in favor? The motion carries unanimously. We do have a couple full board appointments. I think the first one is Gaston College Board of Trustees. We did receive a letter um, requesting that Commissioner Keeger serve again. Uh, I'll make that motion. Second. Seconded by Commissioner Carpenter. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Motion carries unanimously. Uh, we have one more uh, Quality of Natural Resource Committee. Uh, applicant received from Mr. Robert Kloniger the third. Second. If that's Second. a motion. Yeah, that's a motion. Seconded by Commissioner Keeger. Any discussion? All in favor? Motion carries unanimously. Is that it? Okay, we do have one more, the designation of NACO 2014 Annual Conference Voting Delegate. I'll nominate Mr. Carpenter. I will second that. Any discussion? All those in favor? Motion carries unanimously. Commissioner Carpenter, you are the voting delegate. Okay. Yes. An alternate, an alternate too? 
Who's going to be there? Is this in? Um, yeah, uh, I, I would nominate. Is this uh, in New Orleans? Mr. Yeah, Mr. Allen Fraley. Second. All those in favor? Motion carries unanimously. Okay. Next is Commissioner Committee reports. Commissioner Fraley. No, uh, Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Price. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Attended the Gaston Family Health Services Board uh, in April, and I just want to report on a. Uh, a, we had a Mission of Mercy clinic. It was actually a mini mission. Uh, it was, uh, had the dentists in the area, uh, volunteered work, saw 69 patients that day, provided over $27,000 worth of dental free care, had uh, nine volunteer dentists, uh, and that was uh, a prelude to the big one coming up uh, later in the year. We also had our uh, presentation on uh, bylaw revisions and those will be voted on tomorrow night. That concludes my highlights of the meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Price. Commissioner Williams. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I uh, just want to point out that uh, we did have our Caramont Community Challenge uh, a couple weeks ago that went very well. So appreciate everything the hospital did for that, specifically Mr. Mullen over there, uh, beside our CEO, did a phenomenal job putting that together. I uh, was thrilled to see uh, Ms. Kathy Hart was there representing uh, Parks and Rec, and that was great calls for the, uh, the schools of robotics program, right? Is that what it was uh, for? So uh, great work. There was a glitch in the system. Somehow it's showing that my wife beat me by about half a second. I, uh, that's in dispute. There's an asterisk beside of that. I don't know how she beat me in the 5K, but we're looking into it. There's a problem there. The thing that was more impressive than that was the fact that David O'Connor over here actually beat half the group pushing a stroller. And uh, the, the baby was in the stroller. And uh, that's probably the most impressive thing about that whole day was the 5K in the stroller and actually beat most of us. So uh, other than that, uh, our chairman, Phil Beck was uh, one of the guest speakers, did a phenomenal job representing the county commission. Great event. Look forward to doing it again next year. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Commissioner Williams. I did tell him the cheeseburger he was eating probably slowed him down. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner Carpenter. Well, let me add my thanks to uh, the hospital for engaging this community in uh, health care and trying to uh, make us all more fit for the future. Uh, I was out there and... Uh, it was, a, it was a wonderful day. Very large crowd and looked like it was well participated in and thank you. <clears throat> I did attend the EDC meeting, Economic Development Commission meeting today and uh, uh, we did discuss the travel and tourism uh, plans but uh, uh, a significant part was uh, the board is uh, assigning a task force to look at our mission and what the uh, Economic Development Commission should be doing for this community and uh, uh, we do have a mission and goals but uh, we, we're going to look at that again and so anybody have any input on that uh, we'd like to hear from you uh, and you know that's one thing this community can do we, we can do a lot for education but if we can do things to increase the, the uh, tax base here which will help all of us uh, out in paying probably a few taxes per each. Uh, but uh, it and the, and the money, the primary and sales tax that the uh, Travel and Tourism Project will bring in is going to be tremendous. And uh, I commend that board for the work they do. And uh, uh, that's one way we can get out of the kind of the hole that we've been in with the loss of the textile industry over the last number of years. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Carpenter. Commissioner Keeger. Uh, also attended the Caramont Community Challenge and the EDC meeting today. Uh, I won't elaborate on that since it's been mentioned. And uh, I just want to thank uh, Mr. J. Dal Piez for organizing and funding the joint dinner between the commissioners and the college trustees uh, last week. I think it was a good and educational time for everyone and uh, I'll leave it at that. Thank you Commissioner Keeger. County Manager's report. I think we're going to have a presentation of the 2014-2015 Gaston County budget. <coughs>
Good evening, Commissioners, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the public, and so many uh, representatives of our, our county government. It's uh, indeed a, an honor and a pleasure to be here this evening. I've been involved in uh, a lot of different budget processes, and and I may deviate a little bit from, uh, from what you have experienced in the past. I won't be necessarily adhering to a uh, a script but I'm going to try to hit the high points certainly uh, you have all the information that you could possibly want on our budget which is contained in a rather large book um, before I, I really get going I would like to express my thanks to uh, several people and I, I guess the top of the list is Bryant Moorhead who is sitting in the back of the room he is uh, put through put in countless hours and preparing our budget documents and, and certainly sat through numerous meetings with, with all the uh, department heads and other representatives of county government that have been actively engaged in this process for a couple of months now. So this is uh, in some sense the culmination of uh, the budget process in as much as, as we certainly do have a, the manager's budget available for your perusal. But uh, many people uh, spent a lot of time on this, and I, I would also commend our department heads for all the work that they've put in, and certainly their diligence in terms of trying to maintain uh, our services with, with rather constrained resources as they have been doing for, for many years. You know, I believe that there's a reason why we're all here. Uh, we are, are blessed to be able to serve this community and I think it is incumbent upon us to be good stewards of uh, the resources that we have. And certainly that is, is my objective. Um, and I believe that, uh, that every elected official and every appointed official that is associated with Gaston County government feels precisely the same way. Okay, um, we have a, a series, a relatively short series, I will uh, add, of, uh, of slides that we're going to go through this evening. We're not going to belabor a lot of these, uh, and we don't have a great deal of technical information. Uh, certainly, I'd be happy to respond to any questions that, uh, that you might have, and if uh, I'm unable to answer those questions, I have other experts in the room that can certainly fill in. Um, okay, you know, I think it's obvious that uh, this is a transitional year for, for Gaston County government in terms of uh, our budget. We're transitioning at, at the present time to a stronger economy. It's one that I believe yields many exciting prospects for the future. So I'm confident that as we go through time, our revenue picture will improve. We are also confronted with uh, a time in which we're doing a reevaluation of uh, our property values, and, and that is going to strongly influence perhaps our revenue picture in the future. So in that sense, we're also undergoing a transition. Finally, uh, this is a year in which we're introducing priority-based budgeting. And this is a process that will change the approach that we use to budgeting in Gaston County to some extent. And I believe it's going to yield results that will, will be beneficial to us as well. Um, so to uh, begin looking at, uh, at some of the challenges that we face, uh, you know, quality service, I think, is, is synonymous with good governance. And certainly uh, everyone would agree with that and everyone would recognize the importance of, of doing uh, providing good governance to the c citizens of Gaston County of, of utilizing our resources as well as we possibly can. There's been some discussion, I think, of uh, maintaining fund balance, too, and certainly our uh, fiduciary responsibility to the citizens of Gaston County is to maintain uh, an adequate fund balance. The state requires, in fact, that we maintain a fund balance of, of 8%. Currently, we are at about 19 percent, and uh, with the budget that I'm presenting this evening, that could fall uh, as low as 15 percent in the coming year. I anticipate that as things improve somewhat, uh, that that 
fund balance will continue to grow again uh, and reverse the trend that we've seen over the last five years, which uh, is not necessarily favorable and is certainly unsustainable. But Gaston County is in good financial condition. Uh, I think that our bond rating attests to that. We are currently and are maintaining uh, a double A minus bond rating and that indicates that uh, we are not only in good financial health but we have a stable outlook for the future. I believe that rewarding our employees is uh, an exceptionally important uh, uh, thing that we need to do with this year's budget and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment but in, in terms of preserving the organizational health that we have in, uh, in terms of productivity, employee morale, uh, efficiency, and even reducing cost in a variety of areas, it's important that we re, uh, reward our employees adequately. So that's another one of the challenges that we face in this year's budget. This next slide has to do with uh, growth in the budget, which is, is relatively minimal. Uh, there aren't really significant changes in this budget, but with any budget of this magnitude, uh, there will be a few. Our budget overall is approximately $268 million. That includes, of course, uh, certain funds that, uh, that are earmarked and, and uh, others that are enterprise funds that basically are for restricted purposes. So we're really dealing for the most part with our general fund budget, which is $190,535,135. Uh, that budget has an increase of about $8.6 which is uh, a modest amount considering a, a variety of factors especially uh, including the austerity of our budgeting in, in recent years as well of, uh, as inflationary pressures and that sort of thing. This slide on, uh, on the budget drivers, which uh, may be a little bit small for you to see, but uh, it, it has to do with uh, uh, some of the increases that, that I'll talk about in a minute and as do the next couple of slides. But the pie chart uh, gives a, a breakdown and explains some of the modest changes that you see in our budget, some of which uh, are associated with uh, uh, the Department of Health and, and uh, Social Services as, as well as the public safety budget. And then, of course, the 3% COLA that uh, we are recommending in this year's budget. The next slide uh, has to do with social services and the amount of increase corresponds almost exactly to the decrease that we had in the FY14 budget or the uh, FY14 adopted budget and this amount as you may recall was restored in September of, of uh, 2013. There is also uh, included in this budget $548,000 for a 3% increase for social services staff. So. I would very much commend the uh, staff in the Department of, uh, of uh, Health and Social Services for the excellent work that they have done in terms of meeting the, uh, the demands of constrained resources and doing it in a way that does indeed preserve the quality of our services in a very admirable way. The public safety budget, uh, like social services, is one that uh, you know, in which some m funds were restored during the cor course of the current fiscal year. So while it does show an increase, those ec increases, I think, are explained fairly readily. This slide breaks everything down, and as you can see, uh, some of the new responsibilities that GEMS has, uh, particularly in Cherville and uh, South Point, as well as the purchase of a number of public safety vehicles, uh, which I, I might, you know, as an aside comment on the fact that most of our vehicles, when they are replaced, have in the neighborhood of 150,000 miles or more. And for public safety vehicles, 
that really is uh, extending them beyond their their useful life so that is clearly something that needs to be addressed but due to the fact that we have deferred some of those expenses in the recent past the cost is uh, is fairly high this year we've built into the budget uh, two new telecommunicators or, or dispatchers and that will allow us to have an enhanced approach for emergency communications. We're also adding uh, two building inspectors, uh, and this will have a direct uh, offset in terms of the anticipated increases in revenue that we're looking for. This next slide has to do with the cost of living adjustment that is being proposed. As I mentioned before, it's 3%. I would strongly su recommend uh, uh, approving this or, or maintaining this within the budget for some of the reasons that I've already mentioned. But, you know, it's important, I think, as we start into the new fiscal year for our employees to recognize the fact that we truly value them and that we're willing to do something on their behalf. Uh, we are losing staff at present to neighboring jurisdictions and I don't just mean Mecklenburg County. I mean, that's understandable to some extent. I believe that historically Gaston County has, uh, has lost staff to Mecklenburg because of their, their higher wages and that sort of thing. But at the present time, we're losing staff in all directions. And this really compromises the quality of our organization and the trend clearly needs to be re reversed. If we continue to move in this direction, uh, we're going to have problems with lost productivity, increased training costs, and a host of other problems that, uh, that will be problematic for our organization and will ultimately diminish the quality of services that we provide to our residents. A few of the other budget uh, highlights that uh, we have contained in your, your document this evening. I think most of the things on this list are uh, either mandated or they're things that uh, you have already committed to. So whether it's uh, the $310,000 for improved uh, cable access equipment, which is desperately needed, our equipment is so outdated that it's uh, impossible. I think they're looking for parts on eBay at this point. So, you know, things like this are, are necessary. Uh, tax audits, the $350,000 uh, payment to the state for, for tax and tag administration is, is mandated, and so forth, uh, as is the retiree, retiree health insurance. These are not things that are, are really optional for us, so they more or less have to be included in our budget. New positions, uh, I already mentioned the uh, the telecommunicators and the uh, building inspectors. Um, we are also, uh, I think, restoring a wellness coordinator. And that, that's really an important thing, I think, with a lot of hidden benefits. We uh, moved away from our wellness programs uh, a couple of years ago, and that to the detriment of, uh, of county government in some important ways. I think we need to recognize that, uh, that wellness is critical to the health of our employees as well as the health of our organization in terms of productivity uh, and the, uh, the success of our employees is strongly influenced by their, their health and, and fitness and all these kinds of things. But the bottom line too is that uh, you know the, the risk if you don't have a viable wellness program is that our insurance costs naturally rise. And a good wellness program can in fact even save lives because through the identification of, of chronic illness or potentially catastrophic illnesses that people may have, we can head off some of those uh, huge problems that, that may be looming on the, in, on the horizon. Just a couple of words about uh, our funding of the schools. Uh, we've had some discussions uh, about this. As you know, uh, 
I was directed to to move four million dollars from the operating side of the school's budget to to the capital side and I believe that it's my opinion that I've expressed before that it will be extraordinarily difficult for the schools to manage under those conditions certainly I understand very well the uh, the board's desire to improve the the quality of our schools uh, through capital improvements and no one would argue that uh, our schools are are in very good condition and clearly we need a significant increase in, in capital funding for our schools well we've accommodated that already to a degree by the release of uh, 8.5 million dollars 7.5 million of which will go directly to for, towards capital improvements and I believe that Mr. Bradley has identified a plan uh, if properly sequenced that would enable us to improve uh, capital funding for the schools several years into the future without uh, significantly um, encumbering our debt service more than it already is <coughs> so <coughs> excuse me you know I believe that you know education is uh, fundamental to the economic su success uh, and even the cultural vi viability of Ga Gaston County so you know while we uh, uh, have maintained funding at, uh, at its current level I, I do uh, reiterate the fact that I believe it's going to be difficult for the schools to manage with four million dollars less in their operating budget likewise with uh, with uh, Gaston College we have uh, maintained the budget at its current level uh, there is no increase in either operating or capital funding contained in this budget at present and I will say too that Gaston College uh, of course uh, did uh, come and present their budget to us and they they asked for what I felt was a very modest increase on the operating side it was hundred and fifty thousand dollars which considering the uh, the caliber of the institution that we're we're talking about and and the inflationary pressures that we all experience I, I felt that was a relatively modest request well I'm pretty much uh, have concluded what I wanted to present to you this evening I, I would uh, make a couple of comments with respect to where we can find the budget as you can see there is a, a website where anyone can access the Gaston County budget and certainly we can make hard copies available through through the uh, clerk to the board uh, Donna my on my immediate right here and it's also I think it will be available at the main library on Garrison um, so I'd be happy to respond to any questions or or comments that you might have uh, thank you Earl I think Commissioner Williams nudged me first if you'd like to say a few words Commissioner Williams <coughs> thank you Mr. Chairman uh, I just made a couple of bullet points here um, <coughs> I know you started off by saying this is a transitional year and I, I, I couldn't agree more. I think this board has embraced the idea of the priority based budget and I think we're putting a lot of confidence in that process and we really think that that's going to pay major dividends for our county moving forward. Um, I, I think it's incumbent upon us to support the measures that uh, come out of it. but. At the end of the day, I think we're, we're, we're really buying into the priority-based budget. So we're very grateful that you kind of brought that along, and we understand that that's a process that we're already working through. And, and the fact is, this is a pretty vanilla budget that's kind of getting us to that point, and I think that's uh, kind of what our board wanted. I mean, there's no bells and whistles, but uh, the fact is there's a few things that I, that I like. I think uh, we're giving our employees a much-needed raise that they've not seen in, in some time. Uh, it's not raising uh, the property taxes. Where uh, the other thing I like, we're improving the um, cable access equipment, and th that's a big deal. A lot of people don't understand how big that is. I think for us, we take a lot of pride in being probably the most transparent government body that, that I know of, and I think we pride ourselves on that. Uh, this equipment should make it so that we're able to stream online. Uh, things will be available for uh, for the public even more so, but. You know, one of the things we want to do is make ourselves available for people to know what's going on. 
the, the question I've got, um, <coughs> there's a couple of questions, is the, the wellness coordinator. I know Chairman Philbeck uh, is a huge champion for the healthcare revolution that, that Caremont uh, has. Uh, would that not be something we could offer on a regular basis as opposed to bringing on a, a new employee? Could we not maybe offer that or some variety of that to our employees uh, working with our hospital? Uh, th thank you for your question and comments, uh, Commissioner Williams. You know, I'm not certain uh, what the answer to your question is. I, I don't see why we, I certainly believe we could explore that possibility. Obviously, uh, Caremount has tremendous resources that uh, we could avail ourselves of. And whether that would uh, totally supplant the need for a wellness coordinator, I'm not certain. Okay. Well, I'd like to at least kind of entertain that. I mean, maybe I don't understand the whole gambit of what a wellness coordinator would do, but uh, I do know that that's you know, paid major dividends for, for those of us that took it, and uh, again, including our, our, our chairman, who is, is a huge advocate for that program. So I think maybe we should at least consider that. As far as the school funding, um, you know, we talk about a lot of new folks around, and, and we're very fortunate to have uh, Jeff Booker with us uh, as the uh, superintendent. And uh, I, I think what our board, and I don't want to speak for the board, but I think what we have decided we want to do is we've really made a priority of uh, capital. And I think you're talking about ways that we found that we can uh, maintain our, our schools, we can make a lot of needed repairs and, and upgrades. And I think our board supports that. I think that's something we've talked about that we, we want to move forward with. Our concern is at some point, let's say everything has been fixed, everything's repaired, at some point we need to make sure that they're properly funded to make sure that they can achieve the full life expectancy of the facility. And we, we need to properly fund that and make sure that it's in the, the, the capital plan so that we don't end up in a situation where we have 100 plus million dollars in repairs and renovations that we have to do at one time. We're very fortunate to have, you know, this vehicle available to us right now, but what's to say it's going to be there, you know, in 15 years if, if we need it again. So our board has, has talked about incrementally getting where we need to be when it comes to, to capital improvement. Uh, personally, I, I think there's a lot of things in the budget that, that I would like to see. Um, unfortunately, I, I don't know if the money's there. I would like to figure out a way if we could offer our teachers some sort of small supplement to uh, at least show them that we appreciate what they're doing and, and that we, we understand that sometimes it's they're underpaid, underappreciated. And, you know, if there was some way we could do that, I would probably be supportive of that measure. But um, I, I appreciate the, the budget. I think you put it together really well. And, and I'm actually very excited about next year's budget and to see kind of what we put together for next year. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Commissioner. Mr. Mr. Chairman, could I, could I respond very quickly to a couple of things uh, Commissioner Williams said, yes. um, you know, I, I don't disagree, and I'm, I'm, I believe that Mr. Booker would also agree that, you know, providing for the ongoing maintenance of facilities is really important. And indeed, I would suggest that Gaston County's own facilities have suffered uh, from deferred maintenance to some extent, and we probably need to do a lot more there, and it just hasn't been. Uh, possible because of our budgetary constraints but but that is something that we certainly need to get turned around in the future as well and and I wholeheartedly agree with uh, with your sentiments about the the teachers and I believe that mr. Booker has uh, has suggested that <clears throat> there will be the potential for him to to match uh, within his budget possibly out of his uh, reserves uh, anything that we could do along those lines. Commissioner Keeger. Thank you. Uh, well, sometimes disagreement helps us see things from other perspectives, and I'm going to be a little disagreeable of the, uh, which I believe is the direction of the board, and I'm not putting, trying to put anybody down. I'm just trying to find a way to make things better. And uh, you know, we know, we know for a fact, I think everybody understands, or at least you've indicated to me over the past months or years, 
that the schools do need more money uh, and you know capital is extremely important it's it's half of what we budget that and operating but we all know that utilities have gone up and they're going up food is going up the highest it's gone up in decades right now uh, utilities are going up and we're actually having a conversation about taking four million dollars out of a strained budget for operations already it, it, that, that's something that I just you know I, I just don't think it's right and if I don't think it's right I sure can't approve it but uh, in talking to staff and Mr. Mathers over the recent weeks and Mr. Bradley uh, I think if we give staff a little time uh, you know we're retiring some debt you know, from the DSS building, the courthouse, uh, the jail, things like that, it's diminishing. And I think Mr. Bradley and Bryant, they, they may have a way that we might be able to add to the capital, but keep that four million. Uh, it, it, that's a real hard thing to do. It's, it, it's fairly easy to just we just let it go without really fighting to uh, fill that void that we're talking about doing. And uh, I, I really hope the board gives staff some direction to see if we might be able to alter the direction of removing uh, $4 million in operating. It's, I mean, it's just, classrooms are just getting by. I know it firsthand. You know the story. I'm not trying to get any sympathy, but one of my own daughters had to leave the county school system, and she hated it. But she had to to get a raise over in Mecklenburg. Uh, Earl, Mr. Mathers, the county manager, pointed out that the county government is losing employees. Well, we're losing a lot of school people also that aren't necessarily county employees. But is that what we want to be leaders of we're the leaders of this community and we're talking about taking money away that they can't afford if anything they need a in influx uh, but I you know as far as that four million if, if the board would agree and I want to ask mr. Mathers do you think that there's a possibility after we've discussed this that there might be a way to keep that four million in there uh, Thank you, uh, Commissioner Keeger. Um, well, certainly there is a way that we could keep the $4 million in there. With respect to capital funding, uh, Mr. Bradley has uh, put together a sort of a schedule that uh, by which we could consistently augment uh, capital funding for the schools over the next, I believe, four years. We, as you know, we have uh, available approximately 95 million uh, in in bonding authority that has already been authorized by the voters so it would be a matter of, of selling those bonds uh, and having a schedule that allowed us to maintain our uh, our debt service more or less level uh, at the you know at our current level or perhaps a, a modest increase, but certainly not an astronomical increase. And I believe that is manageable, yes. Uh, I, uh, you know, we understand, I think most of us believe that education and Gaston County's record for education <coughs> forever hasn't been real good. You know, we've led the state in, in you know, the number of dropout rates we've been towards the top in in uh, uh, graduation rates uh, the, the wrong end of the top but uh, if it's the root of everything that grows a community why are we even talking about eliminating almost 10 percent of the operation uh, if it's the biggest economic development tool uh, and, and I have to speak up for the college also uh, as a trustee there we cut the college I don't know how many years ago was it five four years ago we cut them 
and and they're doing so much more with so much less that things can't keep on life support. I mean, it needs an infusion, and uh, and, and that I don't have an answer for, other than uh, a one-time thing out of the fund balance. But with the school system, I really think that you know we could go ahead and get rid of some of the bonds that have been approved and use the debt retirement that the county will realize to pay for those because we're paying a lot more interest on the old bonds that we're retiring than we are on these new ones or would. The, the, the interest rates are just so much lower that we have that advantage also. So all I can do is ask the board uh, to consider allowing staff to bring us a proposal before we have a public hearing or when we have a public hearing and uh, and see if that really is a possibility to keep the schools whole to where they are now. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Keeker. Commissioner Brown. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Mathers, thank you for your presentation. Um, I personally would like to see if we could find these new positions that we've talked about, which we've cut positions or we've held them in check for so long. I'd like to see each of these ones who are asking for new positions. Um, sort of give a description of what their uh, duties and structure is going to be within the county over the next five years, not just this year coming. I would like to see uh, what Commissioner Williams added on with the wellness coordinator, maybe somehow to partner with uh, Caremont to finding ways. We've talked about trying to have our community in a better like of uh, wellness. Why not start with our own? <coughs> partner up and showing what a partnership is really about. Uh, we're here to talk about that tonight anyway. I think that's a great uh, thing that we can really go into. Um, I think there's some drivers here that, that I do like. Uh, I agree with Commissioner Williams. One of the things he said, some of the things we're getting rid of some old stuff and finally getting some new stuff that can help us out th for the future for many years. But the one thing I don't like about the budget is how are we going to continue to keep kicking it down the road sort of we finally got our fund balance back I don't want to see us use any more fund balance so we finally got it steady um, it took us a couple of years to finally slow it down a little because it was running downhill and we <coughs> saw that um, I would just like to see in our next uh, presentation maybe something that uh, each department head can come back and and maybe just give us an example of something that they're willing to and I'm not saying we have to take it out but something that they're willing to compromise just for the good of the team to see where we are not necessarily that we say they're uh, going to be done, but it's something that we can look into for the future to see what's next down the road for our five-year plan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, may I respond <clears throat> briefly? I, I, yes. Perhaps I uh, created a little confusion on the, on the fund balance issue, but our fund balance has for the most part been declining for a period of five years. It, at one point was uh, was it about 27 percent and it did uh, it has stabilized to a degree in the last couple of years and we're currently at about 19 percent uh, you know that may fall a little bit more before we reverse the trend but I will say that uh, in comparison with many of our counterparts around the country we're in strong financial uh, position and our our fund balance is is adequate not as good as I would like it to maximize my comfort level but we're, we're not in dire straits also do we have our audit numbers back for our property taxes on what the percentage was of return this year you know the yes I I think we do for the most part and we're running very strong I I think it was uh, 97.5 we're not certain but it's it's uh, very high thank you Commissioner Brown Commissioner Price thank you on page 10 it says uh, new positions uh, social services health division I know at our monthly board meetings we usually go over uh, positions available and there's usually 20 some in each division 
are these new positions or is this a position that is replacing one of those vacant positions? And the same thing with information technology. I know we have openings there, but is this a, re a position you're giving up that's currently vacant and you want a new network analyst? Is that, do you know? In the case of information te technology, uh, their staffing numbers are are lower than they, they formerly were. So this is the restoration of a position. I'm not absolutely certain uh, with respect to the social services position, but I will say that through a variety of means, that department has created tremendous uh, efficiencies and is saving substantial amounts of money. Some of that is through outsourcing and some of it is, I think, just capturing efficiencies in other ways. But, uh, but overall, um, I'd, I'd have to, to uh, research this to some extent, but I'm pretty confident when I say that uh, overall their numbers are, are lower than they formerly were. Yeah. I, would, I would be okay with the positions as long as there's a vacancy in the department and they're giving up a position so we don't, we don't have an increase. That's, we've been pretty adamant about adding new positions over the years. Also, do you have your notebook with you at the podium? This notebook? Yes. Uh, on page uh, 62, it says uh, commissioners and clerk. Okay, I'm there. Okay. Uh, 2013-2004 adopted was 379-521, and the recommended is 404-781. It's a difference of 25260. If you could get me the information of what causes or what's involved in that 25,260, the difference before our public hearing, I would appreciate that on each each department, the increase. Just what makes up the increase and why it's there. And I don't know if anybody else wants it, but that's the only questions I had, Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Carpenter. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I, I only have uh, one question. In, in uh, Mr. Mather's presentation on the transfer of the $4 million, he said it would be problematic uh, for the schools, and I was... Uh, I was wondering if there's a way to uh, to phase that in a way to get to that point where we are fully funding the uh, capital needs, maintenance needs of our school. Uh, as Kellogg read off 46 states, it's uh, above us in funding. I think their goal ought to be as frugal as we are. But uh, I just wonder, you know, we have considered education is one of the top goals of this board. We even did a resolution last year uh, supporting that idea. And uh, I don't want to go backwards, but uh, I do support getting that money into the capital that they need to maintain our school. According to the state constitution and, and statutes, our number one priority is to build and maintain the facilities. Uh, and some of the underfunding of the schools uh, is, uh, is because we do supplements. And we can't keep up with other states. It's been 12, 15 years ago, I was part of a study commission with the North Carolina Association of County Commission to try to address that issue and get the policies in the state to where it became uh, more equitable across the state, the school funding. Um, because a county like Mecklenburg or Wake or some of the others have a larger tax base, uh, they can supplement more. And uh, the, the counties around them don't have that uh, same uh, advantage. Uh, I, I think it should be a goal that the state, we, we, everybody needs to work and get that, that resolved uh, in, in that funding structure. 
Uh, but I do find, uh, agree that we need to get that over the four million all in one year. If if there's a way to phase that, uh, I would prefer to see that because I don't want them going backwards either. Thank you. So, if, if just to make sure that I have this clearly, you're interested in determining if a phased approach to the reduction in operating funds and transfer to the capital side of the school's budget is feasible. I think that's what I rambled around and said. Uh, and uh, response to that, I, I believe that I'd have to consult with Mr. Booker uh, about that and how we could, uh, could manage that process, what would be reasonable for the schools. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Carpenter. Commissioner Fraley. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just a few uh, statements. Uh, uh, I, I also can support Commissioner Keeger's plea uh, not to cut the operation funds, uh, especially even if we have to do it in a phased-in process like Commissioner Carter was talking about. This seems like an awful, awful big hit at one time, and it seems to be sending the wrong message, even if it can be accomplished. Uh, I want to see us move forward. We've made a commitment in education, like Joe said, that this is a top priority for this board. And uh, I don't want to see us go backwards in any way. Uh, and this looks like it is, even if it isn't. But uh, hopefully we can work on that. Also very pleased that we're going to be budgeting for a pay increase for the employees. Way overdue. And I appreciate their hanging in there and doing the job they do every day. Uh, just pleased that we're finally able to make this happen. Uh, and do look forward to uh, going into the priority-based budgeting process next year. I think it's going to help us uh, determine a lot of things that uh, we're just kind of moving through this year to try to keep level, and I think that's going to be a great asset for us as we move forward. And I appreciate the, the budget uh, you prepared, uh, Earl, and uh, that's it. Other than just need to spend a little more time with this, see if I have any other questions. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Commissioner Fraley. I have a few comments. Um, first, I want to thank the staff, um, Earl. I think considering um, arriving here in January um, very quickly putting a budget together um, um, but I'd like to commend you on your work um, what I'm really looking forward to is next year uh, when we have a priority based budget that we can finally prioritize exactly what we want to do um, I do have some uh, a couple concerns and probably and a couple explanations. Um, as far as the wellness coordinator, I personally will not support that. Um, I went through the um, healthcare revolution at Caramont, lost 35 pounds. Um, I think it was $1,700, uh, if I'm correct, at the time that they came here to the county and offered it to all the directors. I think that we could save. I would like to see us work with Caramont to see if that's something they could offer and, and maybe just work out some details, see if we can save some money. I, I, I'm not going to support hiring an employee to do that. Um, I think the long-term cost of that would be pretty significant. Um, so I would like for you to uh, maybe get with them and, and see what they can do for our employees. Then if it's not feasible, then we can always go back and look at that. Um, also on the school's budget, I want to make some clarifications. Um, we're not talking about cutting operations by four million, and I really don't know where that came from. We're actually talking about moving 2.8 million from operations to capital. Currently, we fund Gaston County Schools 1.2 million. Um, we have their budget request, and one of the biggest complaints in here is we only get 1.2 million in capital funding from the commission. Um, the Gaston County Commission, whether we like it or not, are mandated by the state of North Carolina to provide for the capital of schools and the upkeep. That's what we're mandated to do. We are not doing a very good job. We're doing 1.2 million. Uh, I've heard this from school board members. I've heard it from Mr. Booker year after year. And I actually agree. I think we have to change that number. So what, what I support is moving some funds and operations over to the infrastructure side because that's what we're mandated to do. It's not sexy, 
doesn't look good, doesn't feel good. I can give you a lot of sad stories of why we shouldn't. But if we don't do it, we're going to continue to kick the can down the road, and one day we're going to have an even bigger problem. Let me explain. Last year, we gave Gaston County Schools $8.5 million extra. We changed that instead of building new schools or allowing those bonds to lap. We basically reallocated that for capital. That's $8.5 million increase. We also spent, I think it was $500,000 at North Gaston. That's a $500,000 increase. What the public don't hear a lot of times is that year after year after year, since 09 that I've been here at least, we've increased school spending. A lot of people don't hear that, but we have increased it year after year after year. Also, there is a plan that we could spend $65 million of the bonds that we currently have without increasing the tax rate, period. Because old bond debt will retire, we could bring on new bond debt, use that money to help fix some of these schools, and never have to raise the tax rate. And we're looking at doing that in the next three years. That's another $65 million. Here's the problem, though. All that sounds great. But if we don't raise the $1.2 million side of capital, you're going to have new schools, you're going to have all these schools fixed, and you're going to have $1.2 million to keep up all these schools. It's impossible. If we don't change that formula, we're going to keep digging a hole di deeper and deeper and deeper. So the proposal was to take the $2.8 million from the operating side, move that to capital, to slowly move that forward. Now, I'm fine if the board wants to change that 2.8 number. But at some point, somewhere down the road, if we don't raise that number, if we let $200 million in bonds today, fixed every school, all brand new schools, we only have $1.2 million a year to fix it. I think anybody at the school board will tell you that's not going to fix it. So we have to change that allocation. That's what I'm advocating for. Uh, I'm willing to compromise on the numbers. I'm willing to work with the board. But I'm not going to vote for a budget that doesn't change the formula because what's going to happen, you're going to hurt the school system, it'll hurt the taxpayer long term. Um, that, that's a big, a, a big issue for me. Also, um, I, I agree with the gentleman that spoke during citizen comments uh, about teacher pay. But again, what the public don't know is that teachers are state employees not county employees. Uh, at the same time, we're forced by the state because they don't adequately pay teachers, I think, where we have to provide a supplement. Uh, it, it's kind of like incentives. You don't like them, but it's something you kind of have to do. What I would propose is if, based off of your comments, uh, Mr. Manager, if the schools would match a percentage is that from my understanding, one, a 1% 1 increase will cost the citizens $59,000, if I'm correct, somewhere around that area. Is that maybe we do a 1.3, I mean a 1.5 increase, let the schools do a 1.5 increase, and that will give the teachers a 3% supplement increase. It'll get, because our county employees are getting a 3% supplement increase and it's going to cost the county if I'm correct ninety thousand dollars so out of 260 million dollar budget if we could help increase teacher supplements and only spend ninety thousand dollars I think that's something I can support so we, we can dig into the details of, of how we will do that but I think that's something worth looking at um, I guess my last statement, uh, I, I agree with the board. Uh, also, the chamber has really pushed uh, for us to have a world-class educational system. Uh, I think we need to do everything we can to fund education adequately. Um, I support Jeff. I think he's done a great job. I'm happy to see uh, Kenny Lutz uh, here, no. Jeff Ramsey. 
Kevin Collier. I appreciate you gentlemen for being here. Uh, and, and I think we have a better relationship with the school board. And, and I'm, I'm willing to meet with them and work with them and see what we can do to come up with creative ideas. Uh, at the end of the day, when the federal government cuts and then the state cuts, the county cannot take on all these new responsibilities and then provide what we're mandated to do. It's a catch-22. And if we don't fix the capital long term, we're going to have some major, major issues. We're already having those. So that's my comments on the budget. Anyone else have any other comments? Commissioner Keeger. Yeah, I, uh, I'd still like to uh, hear from the finance department. Uh, you're talking about changing the formula. Well, we are going to have a lot of debt reduction coming uh, the county's way in the next uh, several years. Uh, I'd like to see some type of formula where that money is used for the capital of the school since we'll be retiring that debt from these buildings around this complex. And I got to ask, I guess, uh, if I may, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Mathers, you'd mentioned that it we're not taking four million, but the first line on your slide says reduction of operation funds by four million. So you said it was like two something. He's and this says four million. So two, I'm a little two point eight, a little confused, I guess. I, I can certainly respond to that. In fact, the budget that we presented has <clears throat> the transfer of four million uh, from operating to capital, but that could be due to you know perhaps miscommunication between myself and and members of the board in terms of, of what we were, the direction that we we're supposed to go. But that is easily rectified. Yeah, I, I, I think there was general consensus that looking at 2.8 million, it added up to four, not four million. Um, and also, uh, Commissioner Keeger, to answer your question, um, I do agree we could move some of the bond money to help as we change the formula to move money over, but once the bond money runs out, how are you going to keep maintaining these schools? So at some time, we have to be able to increase the capital side to fix the schools and not to depend on bond money to do it. Well, I, but I, 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 I don't know what the answer is, but we have to get there somehow. Well, I, I, most other, most other uh, counties and we do to an extent probably not as well as we could because uh, you know we're a little different here in Gaston because of our economy you know it went down the tubes textile but every you know we could come up with that plan every six or eight years or four years whenever reval comes in and we can hook part of reval to the capital because property is always going to increase now we had some setbacks over the last couple of decades but they're going to happen here and there but we can tie a capital funding uh, formula probably to reval a percentage of it and uh, that's the only way we can do it without tax increases so uh, we'll have a better grasp on that uh, come the end of this year and and I'm, lo I'm looking at all options so uh, any ideas that we have to change the formula adequately fund the schools I'm willing to listen to. Any other comments from the board? Thank you, Mr. Mathers. Great job. Great discussion from the board. Thank you, gentlemen. Next item is county attorney's report. Uh, no report tonight, Mr. Chairman. Are you sure? <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you, Chuck. Uh, next item uh, under other matters is a Caramont lease discussion and direction. Um, I would like to acknowledge uh, CEO from Caramont, Doug Luckett, who is here tonight. Uh, we have several uh, board members uh, as well, Sheila Riley and Donnie Loftus. And thank you for coming out tonight. Um, over the past <coughs> six, seven months, maybe a year or, or longer, um, we have had several lively discussions. Um, with Caramont uh, to discuss some type of a lease arrangement and things of that nature. 
Uh, I'm happy to report that um, we did get a letter from Caramont uh, outlining uh, some initial framework uh, for a starting point with a lease. And I want to just go over a couple of these with the board and provide some comments, and then we'll let our uh, liaison to the Caramont board maybe give us a little bit more detail, and then we can have some comments. Um, the letter specifically stated that uh, Caramont is willing to look at a $20 million corporate bond with no less than a 4% return, which should equal about eighty, I mean $800,000 per year over the life of the loan. Um, also an additional $450,000 um, to be used for community health projects, um, a 40-year lease with one additional rollover. Thank you, Boy Scouts. Troop 28 for coming. Appreciate it. Hey, you're fine. You sat here longer than I would have. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, also, I uh, think Caramont is looking at five at-large appointments that they would like their nominating committee to make. Um, some of the uh, discussions that we had, I want to give you some, uh, maybe a little bit of framework. Um, the Eight hundred thousand dollars, the twenty million dollar corporate bond, with the four um, percent return. I think there was a pretty good discussion and agreement. And Commissioner Williams, you can kind of let me know on some of these if I'm on it or not. Um, is that we would index the uh, bond and the lease payment to make sure they kept up with inflation. So, for example, if you gave us $450,000 a year now, 20, 30 years down the road, it's not going to be worth $450,000. So we are looking at having that index, and I think there was some uh, agreement on that. Um, I think from our board um, and, and some of the discussions, uh, most of our board was comfortable with three appointments. Um, and I'm not speaking for the board, I'm just saying from what I've heard. Um, although Caramont said they would like five, uh, it's also my understanding that no appointments, if we went with this agreement, <coughs> there would be no appointments from Caramont until at least after January the 1st, <coughs> um, whatever the final number came out to be. Um, let me see here. And I think, yeah, the com the commissioner's representative would have a full voting. Uh, the commissioners would have a full voting member, um, and and th that that's as much kind of detail as I have. Uh, maybe Commissioner Williams can uh, weigh in. I, I will say this: I, I do support the framework. I think there's a lot of work that's went into this. For years, I've heard citizens uh, complain, and I think rightly so, that we needed more than a dollar uh, for that amount of land. Um, I'd like to thank Doug Luckett. I, I think um, he has stepped to the plate, wanted to work with the commission every step of the way. I think this is a, a, a good agreement to work with. I don't think either side gets everything they want. Um, but I, I think we both can come out winning. And I think more importantly, and, and what's should trump all of this is the citizen of Gaston County uh, will win by a independent hospital, one that has a long-term lease, uh, and a hospital that is paying its fair share that will benefit the citizens of this county. Thank you, Commissioner Williams. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, let me take a step back uh, before I kind of get into a few of the things you talked about. and. Uh, I just want to say that, you know, serving on the Caramont Board has probably been one of the most rewarding things I've been able to do. Um, being able to be a part of such a great organization, great people, people that really take pride in what they do has, has really been an honor for me. And I've, I've enjoyed uh, just having that privilege to do so. The timeline that I'm familiar with, having just been put on the board uh, last January, was there was some discussion with the county and with the hospital 
and there was never really anything that that either side could could agree to and there was never a framework that that either side was comfortable with and last year uh, there was some well publicized disagreement and there were some issues that was going on at our hospital that the commission took a step back uh, last April and really admonished Caremont to, to take a look internally and say okay there's some things that are going on in the organization that you have to address you know this lease should be put on the back burner while you take a look at some things inter internally and I remember specifically some things that we talked about with the hospital is uh, first of all it was you know recruit a CEO that is engaged in the community it was work on the emergency department there were complaints that our this county commission we received complaints about wait times the service provided things like that all the time uh, and I remember the third thing was working on the hospitalist issue uh, we got emails on our board from a number of citizens that were disappointed with what they were receiving from Caremont when it came to these three things and so the County Commission sent word and said hey we want you to focus on these things before we actually move forward with a lease and I just wanted to kind of report on that because I think that's the most important thing that we should take a look at since those were the uh, directives that we gave to to Caremont uh, I think we should start by pointing out that we recruited a CEO we spent I believe seven months uh, going through a process we had stakeholders we had community leaders employees board members uh, I believe our County Commission we, we had a representative on uh, one of those committees deciding on who we want to bring in as our CEO and after seven months we realized that we we had a rock star right in our own backyard and mr. Doug Luckett and we talked about how we needed somebody engaged in the community and I can assure you saying Doug Luckett is engaged in the community in Gaston County is probably one of the biggest understatements of the year um, not only is he engaged in the community he's respected by the physicians which is a big deal that's something we were uh, concerned about and he's dedicated to the long-term success of the organization and he's committed to keeping us independent as long as possible and I don't think there's anything else you can ask in a CEO other than that so that was number one and that was the biggest thing and I think you can put a big check mark beside that I think we've at the hospital we've accomplished that goal the second thing was to work on our uh, emergency department and uh, just have a couple things here I want to share with you we talked about wait times and the, the service provided and you know we made a decision internally that we would bring our hospitalist program back into Caramont Health uh, would staff it internally not with an outside management company uh, now our program is staffed with local full-time phys uh, physicians that are engaged in Gaston County we're not using the locums we're trying to really keep it in-house uh, we have significant improvements in patient perception uh, with a 90% reduction of complaints now think about that for a minute a 90% reduction in complaints that's amazing for uh, uh, with our hospitalist uh, the other thing we talked about with with the ED is how do we help with the wait times well we're going to be breaking ground here in a few months on the pediatric de pediatric ED in January we're going to be opening up the standalone uh, ED in Mount Holly and we have three urgent care facilities open seven days a week and so I think these are all things that we're trying to do uh, we decided also a, uh, a couple of months ago that we would uh, review our, our current agreement and, and really research and evaluate uh, various providers and we decided uh, through a committee of well-respected physicians uh, Dr. Dr. Ryber, Dr. Russo, Dr. Thomason, Dr. Clasing, Dr. Clark, these are all people, Dr. Reinhardt, that many of us know and respect and really trust their judgment. They got together and really made a recommendation about what we should do with our uh, ED and decided to go with uh, Apollo MD so effective July 1st uh, we're going to go with Apollo MD which is a physician led group with more than 35 years experience so I think those are things dealing with the emergency department wait times in dealing with the service that, that our uh, citizens would get at their organization I think those are things that Caremont took a step back and said we need to address them as well uh, I talked about the hospitals issue how we're moving that in-house 
And, and that's, that's been very well received. It's, uh, again, going very well. Uh, which I think takes this board to our next step of, okay, we've checked those three boxes. We really worked on the hospitalist issue. We've worked on the ED. We've re retained, recruited a, uh, a great CEO that, that we all respect and like. The next step is let's put together the framework for a deal. That's, that's an easy thing. So, uh, you know, through discussions at the hospital board, we kind of bannered a lot of things around and, and decided on the deal that was presented to our chairman. Uh, it's not perfect. There's some things that we need to work out, and there's some things that uh, will get worked out uh, through the legal process. But uh, Chairman Philbeck talked about the 450000 that would go towards uh, health-related uh, issues that we would get. I believe the conversation we had is where that would we take a look at trying to index that every three to five years to adjust for inflation. Uh, the $20 million bond, that's going to provide us with extremely great flexibility. Uh, that's going to be money that we have access to if we, if we needed it. But at the same time, we would have a steady revenue stream from that that this county could use for years to come. So I think when you add those things together, the county and the citizens are really going to benefit. We talked about in our budget a lot of things we'd like to do. Well, this is going to free up some money, you know, in the budget that we can really do a lot of stuff with that money and, and really hopefully make a big difference. Uh, the other thing about this is the fact that it's a 40-year lease. It really gives the hospital stability when it comes to building projects and, and, and long-term growth. I think the key that, that the commission, I want the commission to understand is the hospital is not going to do this and just sit on money. I think the first thing you're going to see is an infusion of money on, on the grounds. You're going to see $200 million reinvested uh, into the community. You're going to see money spent on the bed tower. You're going to see money with, with the ED, uh, infrastructure, technology. That's all going to involve new employees. That's going to involve new jobs. That's, that's going to be a, a shot in the arm for our county. So they're going to take that money and really reinvest it in Gaston County. What, what else could you ask for? other than a, an organization who has a vested interest in the county. Um, the appointments, I also think it's key to know where the appointments come from. I think each commissioner will retain their township appointment. We will have a county commissioner representative on the board. Uh, the chief of staff will be on the board. And then the other five appointments that will we'll start after, after the three this year, the other, the other five appointments will actually come from the nominating committee of the hospital board of people that we appoint. So if we do a great job of vetting our appointments and making sure that they understand they have a fiduciary responsibility to the hospital and a moral responsibility to the citizens of Gaston County, I don't think we're going to have any problem with those appointments. I, I, actually, I think you know, they're going to be able to review and take a look at what the hospital needs and what board appointments they need and, and really be able to make a good decision. I think the fact that we're going to, if this board approves it, open that up to a couple of appointments that can be made outside the county. I think that's key for the organization. Uh, Commissioner Carpenter has said so many times that good quality water, air, and transportation doesn't stop at the county line. Uh, I've heard him say that. I've heard him say it once. I've heard him say it a thousand times. I would say the same thing for health care. I don't think that stops at the county line. So I believe for the organization to grow, this is vital for, for Caremont. I think it's a fair deal. I think it's good. Uh, I think it's, again, good for the county. It's great for the hospital. And most importantly, as Chairman Philbeck said, uh, the citizens are the real winners here. Uh, I want to thank uh, the, the, the board. You know, we've had a lot of discussion about this, as you can imagine. Uh, Dr. Riley has, has headed up a lot of those conversations. Uh, Donnie Loftus, the vice chair, you guys are very familiar with him, really kind of led the charge on a lot of this stuff and really said, hey, let's, let's get this done. But this proposal, I want to be clear, this proposal was voted on and was unanimously supported by the Caremont Board. These are people that we put on the board. The, the seven of us put these people on the board, and they were in unity and unanimously supported this proposal. Whether Annette Carter, James Beam, Dr. Adcock, people like Spurgeon Mackey, uh, Gus Anthony, Michael Dixon, Dr. Meekin, Jim Bailey. Vince Quinn, David Allen Smith, Mary Frances Forrester. These are the people that offer this proposal, people that we respect, people that we thought enough of to appoint them to this board, and they said, 
this is in the best interest of the hospital this is in the best interest of the county and I, I think as long as everything goes through on the legal side uh, mr. chairman I, I think it's a no-brainer I'm excited about this I'm excited about being part of it and and I think this will be a great hit for uh, our county moving forward thank you thank you Commissioner Williams Commissioner Carpenter then Commissioner Keeger uh, thank you uh, well I've been on this board longer than anybody and Tom's not far behind me and Mickey and and we have had uh, people approach us about purchasing the hospital uh, individually or uh, and and uh, I know Tom and I had a discussion with one group and it looked very interesting but I always had in the back of my mind that's going to go to some outside group that's going to control uh, the medical care in the county I am pleased with this proposal uh, that we're going to remain uh, independent here in the county. Uh, I think that's a that's a good step. Uh, I have expressed uh, concern that uh, in this agreement that gives them the ability to negotiate their uh, agreements with uh, joint ventures or other business relations, and uh, I only think that uh, as this hospital is for medical purposes that those ventures would be medical related and I don't know how you would get that into the uh, to the agreement uh, I jokingly said I think it would be a conflict of interest for them to enter into agreement with a funeral home because that would be a, you know well I get the money here or over here uh, uh, then the other part is uh, my concern with the agreement that uh, that uh, 20 million dollar bond would be the counties and we would get the interest off of it for ever how many years uh, I know this board would be uh, very uh, sensitive to that and not cash those bonds in and and I'd like some sort of language in there that it be at least a super majority before that could happen I, and uh, mr. Moore I don't know whether we can encumber it any more than that, but uh, I think it would have to be a, a, a real almost crisis before that would happen. And then the other is the 800,000, uh, not, not 400,000, that's kind of, it's directed to medical use, but uh, 800,000 that the commissioners would have to use, I would like to have that directed toward either education or economic development. Those are the two top uh, goals of this this commission uh, to have a good education system for our citizens and to develop economic development for jobs and uh, improve our capital base so that's my thoughts on this agreement thank you Commissioner Carpenter Commissioner Keeger well Joe hit on one of the points I wanted to bring up that we were discussing just 10 minutes ago uh, with uh, some type of formula and he just mentioned uh, education and EDC uh, so if we get something adopted here I think we can start planning a formula but that'll be up to this board uh, so I don't want to keep anybody here longer than we need to uh, just a few things I want to make sure I understand uh, the makeup and uh, mr. chairman I may need uh, the chair chairman chairwoman of the board to maybe address the question or two sure the uh, or whoever else you need to help okay uh, okay I understand that the seven commissioners would each have a township appointment mm -hmm. uh, and I understand five members the language that it means would be appointed by the board of directors themselves they would come from our nominating committee right uh, vetted according to what needs would this board make that appointment after your nomination or would the board itself perpetuate those five we would bring the nomination okay. to you okay and uh, the one member who will be a county commissioner liaison does that mm -hmm. mean it would be a commissioner or their representative a commissioner okay. a commissioner the liaison would be from this but commission that would be board full voting, and all that. Full voting mm -hmm. yes okay. mm-hmm and of course the chief of staff okay yes. uh, 
And, and I do want to reiterate what uh, Mr. Williams stated earlier. I, I, you know, I think it served us all well to have this little cooling off period instead of just mm -hmm. getting into it. There was a lot going on. We were recovering from maybe some mistakes. We were looking for a new CEO. Uh, so I, I think that's a credit to everybody involved that we did have that cooling off period. And I thank the trustees and the administrators for that. And the only other thing I would just like to bring up, uh, I've had people come up to me over the last several days since this article. I've had people call me, uh, even got a couple letters in the mail. Uh, but I don't think they understand the interest off the bond that we would be receiving. They see 450 and they mm -hmm. think that's a small number, but. Well, the, the 800 is the interest off the bonds. Right. The 450 is an additional sum. Right. Yeah, but I'm saying most people just look at that 450 right. and don't understand there's 800 to go along with it. Right. I would ask, uh, you know, from my perspective, one consideration to, uh, to look at and it was sort of, I think Tracy hit on it a, a little while ago, that $450 payment is worth $450, $450,000 in 2014. Mm -hmm. What will that 450 be worth right. in an economy in 2054? Right. So I don't know if there's going to be any conversation. Uh, I hope there is just about a, a sliding uh, barometer even if it was attached to the revenue. If the hospital, if the corporation had a bad year, it wouldn't grow. Mm -hmm. If it had a good year, possibly it could grow a percentage, you know, as the barometric pressure goes up and down. Right. Don't want to try to get blood out of a stone uh, if there's no blood to get out of it. And we don't want to, you know, we want to be fair also. Mm -hmm. And if the hospital or the corporation, I keep saying hospital, that's okay. We know what you mean. Had a couple of bad years in a row. We would mm -hmm. not want to hurt the health care any further by trying to get more. But maybe that's something we could look at. Yeah, that's here. that's really appreciated because um, with the ACA, one doesn't really know what's coming down the road, and so that that is appreciated. Okay. Well, I'll, I'm not quite sure what I'll be approving, but I will be approving something close to this. I hope, and uh, that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Commissioner Keeger. And I, I did want to assure you, and this will be in part of the uh, direction, that both sides did agree on an index. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. I share your concern. Commissioner Brown. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Madam Chairperson, thank you so much for coming tonight. Uh, I think the biggest thing that I <clears throat> it makes me want to support this idea is what I've seen in the community. Um, we've had three new prongs to the to the Gaston County and all three of them are in the same building and always you are so thank you so much for you three coming but I wanted to say what the hospital now has meant to our county you have the ED going you have the facilities for the urgent care you have new things going on at your uh, main facility you're thinking about expansion it's finally taking place and it's not just a one white building in the middle of the county that's right so I want to thank you guys for that because it's finally something to be proud of on a different scale, not just that one building. It's really moving forward. You guys have uh, incredibly taken care of. Even uh, Mr. Luckett called me after my recent visit to, you know, just to check on it. But I think the, some of the things that happened is, is what you guys have done. I want to commend you on it. I want to see one thing maybe, um, even if it's sort of on a different scale, if it's maybe a health summit. Uh, I don't know if you guys have this to where it includes um, something like our health director because you guys are so uh, intermingled that maybe there's some way that they could work in. We are talking about community-based things. We're talking about the wellness coordinator. Whatever we have to do now that we're starting to uh, put this together, I'd like to see something <coughs> maybe as a, uh, an approach to where it's uh, something to where they're all invited to where you can guys can get together, or maybe do something with the board or something. I think that may be something that can really satisfy a lot of needs for our community because we do serve so many. Uh, through the health department, but thank you so much for coming and thank you for your uh, your time and what you guys have done. Thank, thank you, you very much. Brown. Commissioner Fraley. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just had one question regarding the lease uh, to start with, and I don't know who's the best to answer this. Uh, maybe Chuck, but 
the corporate bond, is it just the same as cash as far as our fund balance would be concerned? Well, we don't know the answer to that yet because we haven't seen the proposal. And actually, the, in the letter here, it says uh, that it would be crafted uh, in, in terms that would be agreeable to the party. So I think that's something that we have to, to discuss to, to see what will work best for Well, I think it would be very sides. important for us for that to be the case because that automatically would bump up that from uh, our standpoint when we're looking at borrowing money and the interest rate we can borrow money at. So. Uh, keep our bond rating strong so I hope that's the way it's going to be and I agree with Joe I think it needs to be something that uh, you know it, it would have to be something drastic before we would want to cash any of that in and start dipping into it finding reasons to you know to cash those bonds in just use the the four percent or whatever it earns off of that money uh, and as far as the lease uh, you know I'm going to put some more time looking at it also before we vote on it may have other questions down the road but right now uh, it seems to be uh, a pretty healthy lease for both parties and I think it's one the citizens uh, uh, of this county the, the forefathers you know who sacrificed a lot to make sure we had this uh, in our community uh, can feel uh, you know, can finally rest in peace that hopefully we're going to get something finalized and move forward in a positive direction. And uh, hopefully it'll be one that a hospital can, can move forward and accomplish its objectives also. And uh, one thing on a personal note I'd like to add, Mr. Mr. Chairman, is uh, just a heartfelt thank you for me. My son was in this facility, and I think some of you, if all of you don't know it, but he had two surgeries in the past month, and he received excellent care. I mean, outstanding care, hospital, doctors, nurses. I mean, very clean, professional, neat, organized facility. And uh, he was very pleased as the patient, and I was very pleased as the parent. And uh, I just uh, hope that the county will support this, this, the hospital and realize what a vital asset it is and to keep it strong and to use it and support it locally. Thank you, and I appreciate all y'all did for him. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Commissioner Fraley. Um, <coughs> just want to add a couple things. Um, uh, we, we've had so much turmoil in the past. Uh, I, I think it's it, it's good sometimes to just stop and, and, and talk about the good things. Um, one thing I failed to mention is the uh, uh, Veterans Memorial. I want to thank the hospital uh, and the Veterans Council. Uh, for following through with that, uh, I, I think it's going to be a great asset to Gaston County. Um, also, um, just want to make sure that uh, uh, I wanted to thank Commissioner Williams. Um, he, he has spent a tremendous amount of time, um, more than I would want to, uh, and, um, on, on this issue. Uh, I, I think being fair uh, and impartial representative of the hospital, and I think as a commissioner, faithful to the citizens as well. And uh, I don't think this lease would be where it's at without uh, his involvement on it. And I, and I just definitely want to give credit where credit is due. And just thank you for the work you've done there. So at this time, what I plan on doing is giving direction. Uh, after I give direction, if the board is not pleased with it, please let me know. Um, so here's the direction based off of the comments I've heard uh, and, and previous comments. We do um, want to go with outside counsel. Um, that's my understanding. Um, and I think we, um, I think we uh, would approve, I think it's Mullen, Holland, and Cooper. Am I correct, Mr. Attorney? Okay, we're, we're good with that. Uh, we do want to move in that direction. Um, we agree in concept of the letter that was sent to us in, in, the, in that a $20,000 a $20, corporate bond with the uh, 4 million. 20 million. Yeah, 20 million corporate bond with a 4% indexed, 4% uh, uh, return, uh, 450000 um, from the hospital as well uh, for community health care projects. We're looking at a 40 year lease. Um, with one um, additional rollover, but both parties, if I'm understanding, have a right to get out. I don't mm -hmm. know what the, it may be 10 years or 20 years before 
the terms over. I think that's something that has to be discussed. Um, uh, I, I think the five at-large appointments, uh, and again, with this board being able to uh, put the stamp on that once your nominating committee uh, chooses those, uh, I, I think that is the direction. Also, uh, we would want it indexed. Um, that is the direction as far as it would be in a lease. Um, we would want the bonds to, uh, we would want the lease worded in such a way as the bonds could count as cash. Um, and, and you would just have to look at the language on that. Um, we would also like to put in the lease, and I think if we do it in the lease, um, it, since it would be tied up in the lease, we could probably do it. Uh, but we would want it to be where the bond, the, tw the 20 million bond, could not be sold without the consent of a super majority. Now, I think if we do a resolution, it could, that could easily be trumped by the next board. But if we tie that into a lease, we may could um, make that a little bit harder to do. And I think that's the direction. Uh, we would also, we want to be careful. We want to take our time and get it done. Uh, but based off the of just conversations I've had heard in the future, we want folks to work with the hospital to get it done. We don't want to drag it out over months. And if at any time there's an issue, l let's get both sides together quickly and move through some of these issues. So what we don't want is attorneys messing it up. The spirit of what we have, and it's just, it is what it is. Uh, I, I think we've got good cooperation. We want to continue to move in that direction. Unless there's any other from the board, is that Commissioner Keeger? Yeah, uh, I agree with everything. Uh, just to clarify, Caramont will own the $20 million bond? No, no. the county will. The county we will. will. The county, will, county own own it. will own it. Okay. Yes. That, I, I wish there was some legal way we possibly could get the General Assembly to padlock that for us if we requested, a, you know, if a unanimous board uh, asked the General Assembly to make sure no future boards, uh, with the exception of maybe the county becoming bankrupt right. or something like that, uh, padlock that amount. We can look into that. And that would be a great vehicle for that formula for education and no, development. I, I agree. I agree. And I, I, one other clarification, uh, Mr. Carpenter mentioned that he and I were approached, and we were, uh, by a national corporation. I want to point out that was 14 years ago. Thank you. Okay, it wasn't like it was yesterday, wasn't yesterday? Or last year or anything. Good. It was 14 years ago. Yeah, it was still on the table. Scary. It was 14 years ago. Is that it? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any? J just one caution. Okay. Uh, asking the legislature to get involved in something that might become mm -hmm. problematic. I, I, I just think if we can do it here within our lease uh, to take care of that, that's mm -hmm. that would be my preference. If we Mr. Can. Chairman, I, I agree with that too. I think if we get the legislator in, it also might keep us from being able to say this is bond money that we can actually use in event of emergency that would not be like cash anymore. It would just be, you know, I, I think I that like could affect like that. Yeah. We can. I think if we tie it in the lease with some language that, 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 and at the end of the day, we work for the people. 20 years from now, 10, the people elect people, and this is what they want to do, sell it, let the will of the people prevail. And I would also uh, like to thank Mickey Price and you, uh, myself serving on the original lease committee, because those talks were not always as pleasant. <laughs> <laughs> oh. These have been so uh, we've moved a long way, and I'm glad we're heading in a positive direction. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I, I'm sorry for acknowledging that. That 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 was uh, that that was so uh, rough. I didn't even want to go back and forth. So we're good. Commissioner Williams. Yeah, I think the the only thing that um, yeah, I guess a couple things we need to work out in the uh, the language where where I think it's a, a little um, vague at this point is like the chairman said we want to make sure that uh, we give a notification period that the county if if we chose uh, to get out of the the lease or not renew it uh, that's fair to the hospital uh, that gives them plenty of time to 
make arrangements, renegotiate, look, look elsewhere, whatever. I think we need to make sure that that's, you know, that's in there and, and, and that it's fair to both parties. Um, <clears throat> I think you know, we could also look at the, the way the governance is right now. We have five at-large appointments that are kind of all at one time. If, if the hospital and this board wanted to entertain the thought of you know, maybe starting next year, maybe redeveloping a timing process where they, maybe there was one at-large appointment a year or something like that so that it wasn't all clumped up, uh, you know, we can, we can talk with them and see if that's something mm -hmm. they're interested in. But I think just if, if there's any governance structure, we need to uh, take a look at with that. But other than that, I, I agree with you on the, uh, the, the bond. You know, as long as it is what it is, it's liquid, it's there for us. You know, if, if a board wants to do something, um, you know, let them, let them do what they're elected to do. But I think once we kind of get those details worked out, uh, I think this thing's ready to go. I'm excited to, to do it. And as uh, the chairman said, don't let the attorneys get in the way. Commissioner Brown. Just one question for clarification. Can you tell me the exact number now? Because we're, we're at seven we know from this. Okay. In addition to the at-large we already had, no, or this is replacing the at-large? Each commissioner will have their own appointment, township. That's appointment. seven. Then you'll have a commissioner appointed from this board That's to be eight. a voting member. Then you'll have the chief of staff. Nine. And then you'll have five township, I mean, excuse me, at-large appointments that the nominating 14. committee correct. So it be one less than there now. So it should be the exact same, same number. number. Exact number, same, same number. number. 14. Okay. Chuck, did you get that direction and do you understand it? Don't get in the way. Don't get in the way. Some of the five can be from outside gas. Correct. Yes. And, and no appointments are to be made as far as the five at large until after January the 1st. That's the sticking point. So in other words, if we make the agreement today, no, the hospital can't make any at-large appointments till after January the first. Yeah, I don't think there. Uh, there's, there's three coming up this year. Right. But so this not. board will appoint those, and then after January the first, the hospital will be able to nominate go going forward. Mm -hmm. okay. My understanding is that this board will continue to appoint all the appointments. Correct. But but after this year. Will go to after nominations. The, yeah, from, after okay. this year, they'll have five at-large nominations that we will appoint. That'll be binding. Yep, that'll be binding. Yes. Okay, gentlemen. Any other direction? Not on this. I had one other issue. Okay. Okay, we do have other matters. Uh, Commissioner Keeger, on another issue. Okay, two things actually, very very brief. Uh, one. Uh, I don't want to bring up bad news, but I do just want to mention the uh, the accident at the animal control uh, with the dog that was picked up and euthanized pretty quickly. A and I do realize, and I want people to know that the dog did not have a chip, did not have a tag, which could have prevented all this. So there, you know, there is some responsibility to ownership, but. Uh, you know, some people, their pets are, are extremely important to them, and I don't know what the county has done with regards to trying to correct this with the individual, but uh, I hope that the county has contacted the individual, and if maybe if nothing else, we allow him to adopt an animal at no cost, uh, you know, just, just to show good faith that, you know, but then again, there is some, some liability with the owner. But I wanted to see if the county could do something there. Uh, and the second thing is, Rodney, want to step around the corner? Uh, recently, the county police, Mr. Fraley, can he see you? There you go. Uh, I wanted the camera to see you. Uh, I, this uh, past week, I got to spend a few hours with Rodney and his partner on the new uh, I call it a PT boat, that uh, Rodney was very instrumental in, in getting this package put together. Uh, 
he's even gone out to the West Coast to practice and learn this boat, and it's an amazing vehicle. Uh, there's none like it around here, and Charlotte Mecklenburg is already going to place an order. They're so jealous, but uh, it, it's going to be a great asset with more and more communities growing on the waterfronts in Gaston County. Uh, Rodney was real instrumental in putting the technology together as well as uh, uh, working on the funding apparatus for this thing. We were able to get this for about $240,000 and the tag was 320000 And as the chief had instructed, there is a slogan on the side of that boat, uh, no public tax dollars went towards the purchase of this vehicle. So uh, I just wanted to shout out to Rodney. He was recognized at the police awards last week, and uh, I just want to thank you for saving the taxpayers a lot of money. Thank I would you. like to piggyback something off of Commissioner Keeger's statement toward that. They also, the company that they bought the boat from, also offered them to go to Virginia, was it? Virginia, Virginia Beach, Virginia, to be their pilot, their captain for what they make on the East Coast. Uh, unfortunately, some scheduling conflicts got in the way, and so hopefully they'll be able to go back in the future years with the board's support of that. It would be at no cost to the county. Uh, that company picks up that cost and sends that up there for those guys to go, which is really uh, a big thing. But also, while we're talking about it, I wanted to let people know about what's going on with the Mountain Island Lake Marine Commission. Um, at no time, I've seen the news for each thing this week talking about how this is going to be detrimental. It's not. Those guys are still going to be on the lake. Mecklenburg County is still going to be on the lake. Wildlife's going to be on the lake. Um, we also have the U.S. Coast Guard is going to be on the lake. So. Boater safety is still going to be intact and everything uh, for people to enjoy uh, a pleasurable afternoon with their families and doing things on the lake is going to be uh, forefront and our uh, uh, Marine Patrol is going to be a part of that and we're excited to see that still uh, carrying on. Uh, the Marine Commission was not there to uh, enforce the laws. That's what the law enforcement does. Thank you, Commissioner Brown. I think we have one more comment from Ms. Sheila Riley and, and, and then we'll adjourn. I think I sat down too soon. I just wanted to thank the commissioners from the bottom of my heart. Um, I think this is extremely exciting for Gaston County, and um, we at Caramount look to a great working relationship moving forward with this lease. I'm very excited, and I thank you all very much. Thank you, Sheila. That's all I want to say. <coughs> Commissioner Carpenter, last comment. Uh, well, this is, uh, I had a, a citizen a couple uh, tell me that I didn't smile much you know they and I told them I said you know we deal with such serious things I, I don't have a lot to smile about but if the cameras are on me whichever way it's it is I can smile <laughs> thank you thank you this concludes our meeting for tonight. Our next work session is June the 10th. We will hold a special meeting immediately following the work session to hold a public hearing on the proposed 2014-2015 Gaston County budget. Citizen comment is welcome. Our next regular meeting is June the 24th, 6 p.m. at the Harley B. Gaston Junior Public Forum Courthouse. Thank you for watching. If you have questions or comments, please telephone our clerk, who is going to be a grandmother very soon. Congratulations, uh, Miss Granny, I mean Donna Buff, at 704-866-3196, and share them. At this time, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Motion made by Second. Commissioner Price, seconded by Commissioner Brown. Any Third. discussion? All in favor? Yes. Meeting is adjourned. <laughs>